Hello class. So in the last lesson we were just introduced to this whole idea of transformations of functions. We learned about translations, reflections, and vertical stretching. In this lesson what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at function equations and we're going to see how we can rewrite these function equations um, with these different types of transformations on it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at translations. So let's look at a, a translation. Um, we have a f of x here, and we're going to do a horizontal translation on it. The way we do this, if we want to, say, translate it horizontally uh, by h units, we rewrite the equation as, instead of f of x, we take f of x minus h, where we're subtracting h from the input. That will cause the f of x to be shifted uh, to the right or to the left. So if, it's, if h is greater than 0, we have a right shift. If h is less than 0, we have a left shift. So I, I showed a picture here of a right shift. Vertical translations, um, in some ways, are easier to actually picture. So let's look at this case. We have, again, the same function f of x. And instead, we're going to uh, move it up by k units. And so if we're moving it up by k units, every single point here, the y value, the output value, is being increased by k. And so uh, the way it works is that we rewrite f of x to f of x plus k, where we're adding k to the output of the function, and that makes all of the points of the original function move up by k units. So vertical translation, where it's uh, uh, vertically moving, we add k to the output. Where we're horizontally translating, we subtract h from the input. So there's an opposite thing going on there. So in the case where k is positive, uh, it moves the function up. When k is negative, it's going to move the function down. So that's translations. Let's look now, or let's look at an example of it. So we have f of x. Um, f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. This is a line. If we want to translate this four units to the left, uh, this will be a horizontal translation, so we're going to change the input. So we take x minus h, and in this case, uh, we're moving to the left, so we want to move, uh, h in this case is negative 4, so we simplify this, f of x plus 4. And so now we're going to plug this x plus 4 into this function up here. So we get 2. So we have the 2 up here, 2 times x plus 4 plus 1. And now we just do some simplification, and we have this uh, new g of x, which is 2x plus 9, which will be uh, um, uh, shifted over by 4 units to the left compared to f of x. Okay, let's look at an example where we are shifting down instead. So this is vertical. So since it's vertical, we're going to be... Um, adding or subtracting to the output of f of x. In this case, we're moving three units down, so we subtract three from f of x. So now I'm going to simplify this. I'll replace f of x with 2x plus 1. And so I have this new function is 2x plus 1 minus 3. And I simplify that down to 2x minus 2. So these are our new functions generated from the original one. Now let's look at reflections. Let's start with um, reflections in the x-axis. So when we reflect in the x-axis, um, every single point in f of x flips across the axis. This point flips down here. This point flips above the x-axis. This point flips below the axis. And you notice that all of these movements are vertical. Since they're vertical movements, actually what's happening is we're multiplying the output, we're multiplying f of x by negative 1 to make this flip 
in the y uh, coordinate. Conversely, when we want to reflect in the x axis, we're taking every single x coordinate and creating the opposite value of that. So the x coordinate value here became from, went from a negative value to a positive value. The x coordinate here went from a positive value to a negative value. So in this case, we're doing a horizontal type of uh, uh, transformation. So we're going to be looking at um, how the x gets affected. So in this case, the f of x becomes f of negative x, where we're multiplying the input by negative 1. Conversely, you notice we multiplied the output by negative 1 to achieve a vertical reflection. Okay, so let's look at an example for this. So in this case, f of x is an absolute value function. And what we want to do is we want to flip this across the x-axis. Now remember, the x-axis um, is like this, so we're taking a point here and flipping it downward. So it's a vertical type of motion, and so the way we do this is by multiplying the output by negative, or by negative 1. So I replace f of x here with this definition. So it's the negative of this entire absolute value function. I distribute the negative sign across it, and I get my final answer here. g of x, the reflected function, is going to have this equation. In this next example, um, we're going to flip it instead um, across the y-axis. Um, when we flip it across the y-axis, this is a horizontal movement, so instead we multiply the input by negative x. So I'm going to take this negative x and plug it into this function up here. So I have 2 times negative x minus 3 plus 4. And I'm going to do some uh, more simplification here. So um, I just multiplied uh, 2 times negative x here. But I'm, now I'm going to factor out this negative 1 right here. And I get this negative of 2x plus 3. I can actually do a little more work here. Um, there's a property which says if I have um, a product here, uh, absolute value of a product, I could split that into the absolute value of each of the two terms. So I take this negative 1 and I take the absolute value of it times the absolute value of 2x plus 3. And now we could simplify the absolute value of negative 1. That's just 1. And so this simplifies down to the absolute value of 2x plus 3 plus 4. Okay, so that's reflection. Now we're going to look at um, some vertical stretching and shrinking. And also we're going to look at horizontal stretching and shrinking. Let's look at vertical first. This is actually something we looked at in the last lesson. Starting again with a, a basic function, f of x, let's look at the case where I'm doing a vertical stretch. So this point moves up by a factor of 3. This point moves up by a factor of 3. It used to be 2 units, and now it's 6 units high, and so this is my new function. So you can see in this case that the original function, uh, all its values got multiplied by 3 with this vertical stretch. Um, if we look at a shrink case, instead of points going up, points are going vertically down, this point here at unit 4 goes down to unit 2, you know, a factor of 1 half. This one here was at a y value of 2, now it's at a y value of 1, again a factor of 1 half. This is our new function here. So instead of multiplying it by a factor of 3, we're multiplying it by a factor of 1 half. So when the, the multiplication factor is greater than 1, we're stretching it. We're doing a vertical stretch. When the value that we're multiplying f of x by is less than 1, it's going to be a shrink. So that's the vertical case. 
Um, we're going to also look at a horizontal case. Um, we can do horizontal stretching and shrinking as well. In this case, we're concerning ourselves with the x-coordinate instead of the y-coordinate. So, you know, for the vertical stretching and shrinking, we were thinking about how are the x -co y coordinates, how are the y coordinates changing. In the case of a horizontal stretching or shrinking, we're thinking about the x values. So in this case, let's look at a, a stretch case. Um, each of the x values, let's look at this value. It was, the x value was 2, it became 4. The x value here is 3, it became 6. The x value here was negative 2, it became negative 4, and so on. So here we're looking at a horizontal stretch case, and this is the interesting thing. Instead of multiplying the x value by 2, we actually divide it by 2. So it's a reciprocal relationship here. In the case of a horizontal shrink, we're taking this x-coordinate here and dividing it by 2. And we have our new function here. And again, there's this um, kind of reciprocal relation. If we're shrinking it horizontally, horizontally by 1 half, we end up multiplying the input by the reciprocal, and in this case, by a factor of 2. So, um, when we have a factor here that's greater than 1, we are shrinking. And when we have a number in here that's less than 1, we are actually stretching. So in generic form, we have this. To do a vertical stretch, we multiply the output. Um, and when we do a horizontal, we multiply the input. This is a general theme that we saw for both translation, reflection, and now for uh, stretching and shrinking. Whenever the, the graph is kind of being affected vertically, we're doing something to the output. We're either multiplying the output, or maybe we're adding or subtracting from the output. Whenever uh, we're doing something to the x value, or horizontally, uh, we're doing something to the input, or the x value, and in the case of a horizontal stretch, we are multiplying by a factor of a. Now, we need to be very careful here because they are opposite. So for vertical stretches, greater than 1 is going to stretch us vertically, but for horizontal stretches, we have values less than 1. So we do have to remember there's this kind of opposite thing going on. I remember the vertical because it's kind of a lot, very intuitive, um, in understanding that. Multiply times 3, it's going up by a factor of 3. And then I just remember that the horizontal is just the opposite. Okay, so let's look at an example. So we have h of x here, and we want to do a horizontal stretch. So horizontal, remember, we are doing something to the x value. So we're going to write it like this. I take my g of x, and that's equal to h of one-half x. So instead of, uh, you know, we have a factor of two, we take the reciprocal one-half x. So I'm going to take this one-half x and plug it into my function here. So I have four times this value, one-half x, plus one, plus three. And now I'm going to do some simplification here. I get this as my new translated equation. Or, sorry, not new translated, new um, horizontally uh, stretched equation. Let's look at a vertical shrink. Uh, vertical shrinks mean we uh, multiply the output. And in this case, the one-third value is what we multiply by. So I'm going to replace h of x here. h of x was defined by this, and I'm just going to replace that here. And there's not a lot of simplification. I'm just going to distribute this one-third across. Um, one-third times this, one-third times that, and this is my uh, simplified function that has been vertically shrunk by a factor of one-third. Okay, the last thing we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to look at how we can actually do multiple transformations. We can combine one on top of the other. In this case, we're going to start with the function f of x, we're going to do a reflection over the x-axis, 
and after that we're going to do a translation down by four units. So this is really just doing it one at a time. So I'm going to reflect first because that's what the statement is saying. I'm going to make a new function. I'll just call it uh, R of X stands for reflection. And since it's over the X axis, I need to multiply. It's a vertical type of transformation. So I'm going to multiply the output by negative one in order to get that uh, reflection of the Y coordinate going from a positive to a negative or vice versa. So now I replace f of x here. f of x was 3x plus 4, so I have negative 3x plus 4. I distribute my negative sign here, and now I have my equation for the reflected um, uh, uh, function here. So now I'm going to take this function, and I want to then now translate it down by 4. So again, this is a vertical type of transformation, so I'm going to be uh, taking my Rx value and I'm going to subtract the output by 4 because it's, you know, it's a vertical operation. I, I am doing a, a minus 4 on the output. So I take my R of X, which I just calculated. I'm going to substitute it right here. And then I'm just going to do some simplification. And that is my final answer. This is my transformed graph that is both reflected as well as translated down by four. So that's the lesson for today. Um, go ahead and uh, if you'd like to do the do problems that are on your sheet of paper or you can, um, we'll do it also together in class.